we will work together to achieve the objectives of Merck More Than a Mother through many angles because we have to target all the angles to, to resolve this problem and to change a culture. One of them helping building advocacy, destigmatizing infertility, especially infertile women, speak about it everywhere, like any other condition, like diabetes, like flu, it's normal. And then we also have to uh, improve access to education and information, awareness about infertility. Because if you know that the infertility incidence is very high in Africa, it's almost like uh, 180 million couples are suffering of infertility, which is accounts to one couple every four couples are suffering from infertility. It's a huge number. But 85% of these cases are due to inf untreated infectious diseases. Hence, prevention is very important. So we can actually raise awareness about prevention so we can eliminate a very high number of infertility cases in Africa. It's a big challenge that has been faced by couples and the couples that suffer from this challenge actually have been suffering in silence. And I really want to thank Mark for breaking this silence. We in Uganda did launch our campaign in February this year and we really appreciated the fact because we are aware that between 10 to 15 percent of the couples that attempt to have a pregnancy fail to have pregnancy in Uganda and the fertility clinics that actually exist in Uganda we have five of them they are all in the capital city and they are private it costs between three thousand five thousand dollars if you visit these fertility clinics and yet the ordinary people cannot afford. So as government of Uganda, from the time we launched this campaign, we are now trying to incorporate, to integrate fertility care into the other maternal or services that women actually get at the health facilities. I want to thank you, Nigeria, for showing a very good support towards this campaign. I think this is the first country that we have gone, and we've had head of states and the first ladies joining hands and showing support towards infertility. 50% of infertility is caused by male factors. But it is a woman who bears the shame, the embarrassment, the tears, the pain, You'll, you'll watch later on in the video about my own experience, which led me to push the IVF bill that we call ART bill in Parliament together with uh, a female member of Parliament called Honorable Mili Odiambo to make sure that we regulate the treatments that are available from IVF and all other methods that are available in the country. So as we speak right now, we are the first in Africa to have debated and passed that bill at the National Assembly. And right now it is at the Senate. We are waiting for them to do some amendments, but very soon, hopefully, it's going to pass at the Senate so that it becomes law in Kenya. As a woman, not even as minister now, this is a very good program. This is a commendable program. It's a campaign that my ministry had been on because my ministry advocates uh, on uh, harmful traditional practices. And this practice is one of the harmful traditional practices because of the stigmatization of uh, women that are infertile. It's uh, very prevalent in Nigeria. It doesn't matter the age or the place you come from in the north, in the east, in the south, I mean in the west and uh, in in the south, north and south of Nigeria, from whatever part of the country you come from, once you don't have children, there's that stigma, there's that trauma that you go through. The women don't come out because they are so traumatized that they remain in and uh, nobody knows about them. But with this campaign now, we'll intensify our efforts to see that they come out and get help. We regard them as vulnerable. And women concerns in Nigeria is a business of my ministry and me as a woman. Therefore, we thank you for bringing this program. We'll uh, join you in the campaign. We'll collaborate with you to make sure that the women that are targeted in this campaign
come out and receive the blessings that we have brought for them. And that will encourage our government to do more than they are doing now. Because my government is uh, doing very well for the vulnerable in Nigeria, women especially. We thank you very much for this program and uh, I assure you that my ministry will give you 100% support and collaboration. I'm very excited that Nigeria is joining the list of countries that are going to start uh, talking a lot about infertility not being a reason why you should hide under your bed. Uh, most importantly, I as a man, and knowing that this problem is caused by even about 50% due to male factor. And obviously, with the statistics that we now know, that one out of every four couples in, the, in Africa have infertility challenges. So that means in Nigeria, with our population, we should be talking about 250 million people that have this infertility challenge. My colleague from Kenya, we've been to over 10 countries, I believe, and she's always quick to talk about Kenya being the first country that has regulated uh, their ART, assisted reproductive technology, and I assured them that Nigeria will be the second. And um, I can report to you that uh, the bill uh, for us to have our own uh, ART, assisted reproductive technology bill, to have regulation of all the uh, infertility uh, interventions is already going through the first reading uh, in the Senate. I think we deserve a round of applause. And um, with the very special relationship the Senate has with the Honorable Minister of Health's office, I can assure you that with the budget coming in 2017, uh, infertility will take a very prominent position. Infertility in Africa and in Nigeria is, is largely preventable. And with 85% due to sexually transmitted infection, we can really increase awareness, let people know that little things that we do that give us infection, the untreated appendicitis, the gonorrhea infections, the STIs, can be prevented. Someone said that every endeavor is an opportunity for learning. And so being here today, I've seen a new dimension. We've taught students over the years that infertility is beyond a clinic or laboratory. It's also a public health matter. Now we are seeing another dimension. And so this, to me, will further energize us to improve awareness, let people know. Um, and then we will then work through our institutions. We have control over the teaching hospitals. And we will also work through the training facilities, um, the postgraduate programs to strengthen Infertility management as a source specialty, this is important for us. Um, when we improve it, then we can improve on delivery on the successes. And we're working with the Senate and I'm sure the relevant organs of the National Assembly, we can improve on the practice, we can improve on the governance system, and we can also improve on quality of care. I must really, really thank the First Lady or the Vice President, uh, accepting to host this event and I must equally thank the wife of the Vice President for making this to come today and being ably supported by the wife of the Senate President and the wife of the Speaker. Yesterday at the launch of the MAC project in Lagos, the Director of MAC was there and it was Merck that supported Step 2 and Edwards to have the first test to baby Louis Brown. So, so basically it is a resistance. But I have to tell you something. Today the changes are occurring. And for the first time, the World Health Organization, WHO, has now accepted that infertility is a human rights issue. That is, every human being on earth, male or female, has the right to have a child. Therefore, they, they must be supported. There must be infrastructure from government level, political machinery, all the way to academic and teaching level to support infertility. We believe that uh, 
an empowered woman uh, is a happy woman. An empowered woman is able to seek for medical assistance. And an empowered woman and a happy woman is also uh, able to change uh, the society. So uh, this actually forms the basis of our collaboration between Future Assured and MAC. And uh, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, MAC for extending this hands of uh, partnership to us. And I would like to also uh, assure this audience and the country at large of our commitment to ensure successful implementation of all related activities as far as Mark More Than a Mother project is concerned. Uh, going forward, we intend to uh, come together and uh, develop uh, an operational plan which is going to address key aspects of the program, including the selection criteria for the women across the country and uh, how we are going to support these women both socially and economically. I would like to particularly recognize Professor Ashiru. I believe it was 12 years ago that we actually jointly held a conference to talk about the issues of infertility and to try to find ways to help. Since then, I think in our program in the Wellbeing Foundation, we've had nine deliveries. But I, I do have to say, and I'm speaking to the Honorable Minister for Health here, that treatment for infertility is really, really expensive. And so I would hope that the Nigerian government will partner the private sector to find ways of making treatment more accessible to women and families around Nigeria. Merck, I want to say a huge thank you to Merck. I think I was eight years old when my father took me to Merck's factory in Pennsylvania where they were producing a flu vaccine. So I certainly know how old Merck is in Nigeria. The problem that gives rise to a need for these solutions is evident. The need for intervention is urgent. The beneficiaries of the project are waiting their numbers. It is gratifying to see that through this meeting, all the partners involved and the project plans are up to the task. The health and well-being of our people is a goal that Her Excellency is most passionate about, and this is the focus of her Future Assured Initiative. This she seeks to implement for the good of the Nigerian people. The problem of infertility, either primary or second infertility, has been the cause of great sadness to not only the women who suffer from infertility, but also their families and communities. Stigmatization, discrimination, isolation, hardship, and emotional distress are just some of the effects of infertility. Information is crucial to saving our people from infertility. We need to know what the causes of infertility are and what to do about it. I'm sure there's a lot to learn from the medical professionals to aid us in eradicating infertility in our nation. WHO data reveals that one in every four couples suffer from primary or secondary infertility. Their statistics state that infertility in Africa is largely due to infections, and as many as 85% of infertile women in Africa may suffer as a result of infections. What are these infections? How can they be prevented? How can they be stamped out? This information must be made available to our people. And so I convey once more Her Excellency's assurance that she lends her voice today and always to the campaign Merck More Than a Mother. And she looks forward to a fruitful partnership between Merck More Than a Mother and her Future Assured Initiative. Also, her gratitude and appreciation goes to all who have chosen to make themselves available and to give up their resources to help the Nigerian people to ensure their health and well-being. Her Excellency says thank you. Thank you for listening. God bless you. God bless Nigeria.